faced by British troops in the past few days, here trying to protect 200 Croats in the monastery of Guchigora two days ago, have pushed them closer to the brink of the unknown than anything else in the past seven months of backing UN humanitarian operations. They begin to reflect the worst case scenario of gun law and three-way ethnic anarchy that British politicians feared when the Commons cautiously approved the dispatch of the Cheshire Regiment last autumn. The anxieties and options then were clear. If in a very short space of time it becomes much too difficult and we start incurring casualties, and then we will have to look at the whole situation again. If on the other hand um, it goes on reasonably well, um, and we manage to achieve what we're trying to do, which is to bring aid to these suffering people, uh, then it could go on very much longer. So far, through a combination of great skill, tact, patience, and it has to be said, great luck, the British forces in particular have, by and large, kept the convoy roads open, with narrow escapes. Like this sniper's bullet in a helmet, few casualties and only one death due to targeted gunfire against British forces. If that wasn't a helmet, I'd have been dead. That relative calm for British UN troops was, though, a reflection of the war during the winter and spring months, when the Croats and the Muslims remained friendly allies by and large, when, in relative terms, the main aggressors were Serbs, and when central Bosnia was not yet the full-blown cauldron of war it has now become. Someone knows. And he's, or everyone that knows is guilty. But as Colonel Bob Stewart, of the Cheshire's commander, began pressing the humanitarian mandate well beyond its limits of escort duties in April to actively helping local communities, his troops discovered the horrific beginning of the Croat Muslim hate, which is now threatening to overwhelm the Prince of Wales Regiment, forcing them to shoot in self defence as allowed by the United Nations. Last week's Serb attack on this Danish UN aid convoy using anti-tank shells of all things, in which two men were killed, underlines how random, indiscriminate and unpredictable the threat is now. Fearing the worst, defence chiefs dispatched the carrier Ark Royal to the Adriatic, a seaborne rescue platform steaming in circles off the Italian coast since January. Its crew preparing for the moment Whitehall decides that British forces in places like Vitez are in such danger that they must either be reinforced or evacuated to save lives. Today, as this squadron of British Jaguars prepared to beef up NATO air power over Bosnia ten days from now, the Prime Minister said British troops had been right to fire in self-defence. He talked of a widespread deterioration in Bosnia, but with reinforcement under consideration, not evacuation. We have contingency measures in hand to protect our troops in Bosnia and to ensure their reinforcement if that should prove to be necessary. And I wish just to give you this assurance today. We will not take any unacceptable risks with the lives of our troops in Bosnia. Meanwhile, at the end of a two-day NATO meeting in Athens, which today included Russia and Central European countries, it became clear that there is now agreement for NATO warplanes to protect all UN forces in Bosnia, not just those troops protecting the new Muslim safe areas, which had been the original proposals. The new and much wider commitment to use air power means that aircraft like these British Harriers on standby could in theory be used now against those who mount attacks on UN forces like the British outside safe areas. That is, if the attackers can be targeted and found, which in a situation of anarchy and gun law is highly unlikely.